Uh, <laughs> Thank Jared. you so much. <laughs> he told me to stop him after like three minutes. There's no way I'm stopping him. <laughs> yeah, man. Stop me. <laughs> no. I'll go forever. Ladies and gentlemen, Sunny Emery. How you doing? Thank you for being here. Oh, thank you for having me, man. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, Sunny has played with like tons of uh, artists. You've been playing for 46 years, did you say? Yeah, close to that. Something 40. like that. So, Bette Midler, Steely Dan, Earth, Wind & Fire. Yep, Stanley Clark, Lee Stanley... Ridauer. <laughs> I'm sure yeah. the list goes on and on. Uh, one thing you guys should definitely do is check out his website. You can see his full bio, the, the full list of people he's played with. And that's sunny-emery.com. Uh, definitely go check that out. He's got some uh, a Live in Prague DVD for sale and uh, an album that's going to be for sale there yep, shortly. Yep, exactly. So we're actually going to be giving this stuff away at the end of this lesson, so make sure you stick around for that. Stick around. <laughs> some <laughs> trivia, some Drumeo. Uh, yeah. sun, some sunny trivia. Um, <clears throat> well, thank you so much again for coming. Oh, no problem. No yeah. problem, man. It's really a pleasure to be here. This is a great thing that you're doing, yeah. and uh, I'm big on education. So Cool. Um, uh, I'm here. Nice. And thank you to Yamaha. Yamaha is the one that put us in, in contact with Sunny. Yeah, Sunny's thanks so. to Yamaha, all the guys at Yamaha, yeah. and uh, Sean Brown, Yamaha Canada. Thanks for hooking us up, man. Appreciate yeah. it. And uh, love to all my uh, drum brothers and sisters out there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> cool. Okay, so this lesson is on linear concepts and yeah. flamser sizes. Yeah, flamser sizes. Is that what you... That's, I've never heard yeah. that before. Yeah, that's so. what I call them. That's what you yeah, call them. Yeah, okay. that's what I call them. Uh, all I've done is kind of altered the um, the actual rudiments and um, just taking flams, try to take it to a, a different level. Okay. Um, as most drummers know, uh, multiple flams back to back are pretty hard to to acquire. Yeah. You know, it takes a lot of time. So these are exercises that'll help you uh, kind of develop that. Yeah. Uh, and then the linear thing is based on no instrument playing at the same time. Uh, I got into some of it during the solo. But I'll explain. I have a couple of examples that you can see, and yeah. uh, I'll explain exactly, you know, what's what and cool. how it works out. So. Well, let's get into that. So, for you watching uh, live, uh, there is the opportunity for, to ask questions, and so there's a Q and A button right below this video. So go ahead and just <coughs> click submit a question if you have that. There will probably be lots of them, so submit it early if you know what you want to ask Sunny. Um, also, the PDF for all the exercises that's that and flam exercises yeah. he's going over <laughs> is right below the video. You can just go ahead and click download uh, the PDF, and then you can kind of follow along with that. Yeah. So. Cool. Great. Um, let's start with the linear concepts, okay? okay? Uh, the first one is a concept that is in 7-4. Um, and very slowly, I'm going to play this very slowly. Now, these exercises can be used either, either as a main groove or you can break it up and use them as fills. Once you have the concept, it's pretty easy to, like, uh, get the feel of what's going on. And I suggest practicing these with the metronome very slowly, very mm -hmm. deliberately until you have the feel. So, here it is. Uh, The beautiful thing about the linear concept is it gives you a chance to explore different sound sources. And uh, that's what really opens it up and lets it flower and, and bloom. Um, so I'm going to play that again for you slowly, and then I'm going to speed it up just as it is between the kick, snare, and hat. And then I'll start to experiment with different sound sources to show you how you can develop this into a, a major, major thing. Cool. Here. So, two, three. of options. I mean, the, the combinations are, are limitless, basically, yeah. you know, and uh, I like to use it. That's a really interesting thing to play across a 4-4 groove, yeah. you know, um, and it, it sounds really interesting. I did it in, in uh, that, across that track that I just played on, yeah. and uh, so it really, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a head twister. So it, take, it would take se seven bars to line yeah, up? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, to line That's it up. That's cool. Yeah, exactly. That's nasty. So yeah, Is exactly. <laughs> I used to mess up my band all the time, and I would just hang out there forever on it, you yeah. know, and just, uh, 
and uh, and not bring it back in until I felt good, really felt like bringing it in. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you'd recommend just people to start it nice and slow, um, and then as far as accenting, like the pattern is written with no ghost notes. Yeah, exactly. And so if you were to um, play it as a beat, where would you place that? Well, I mean, you know, if I was going to play it as a beat, it would probably be more just like what I just did. It would be... Seven on uh, my upcoming fusion project called Feeling Hot. Yeah. And uh, the basic groove for it is. Uh, uh so that's the basic groove. So every now and then I'll slip into this. It's really kind of twisted up, so. Cool. Yeah. Awesome, man. Exactly. Um, okay, number two. All right. Number two is um, also a linear concept uh, based on 16th notes, and it's spread across the toms. Um, <clears throat> now, if you see the second group of 16th there, the first, um, the X denotes a tom, uh, three toms. I'm sorry, the, um, the, the first 16th in the second uh, group there denotes toms, okay? Okay. Um, toms and then... Uh, they step down, so very slowly this is. All right. And uh, once again, um, you can use that as a main groove if you want. I played it across the groove earlier. Um, sped up, it sounds like this. So basically, I like to use this in a halftime feel. Yeah. So. And then I start to experiment with changing the sound sources again. So here we go. So, it's like that. So, so you can get into, you know, it's like I said, man, the, the possibilities are endless, you know. So, is this something you did, uh, created just while playing music and then wrote down, or is this something you first wrote down and then? No, this is something that I kind of stumbled upon um, musically, you okay. know, and then I decided to just write it out and see what it looked like on paper, and then, um, uh, you know, it just kind of came to life from there. I just started experimenting from that point, yeah, you know? and um, it, uh, it just kind of grew and grew and grew you yeah. know, over time. When I was looking at this, I, I right away think hi-hat, I'm going to play with my right hand. So it's yeah. kind of cool that you did all yeah. the hi-hat with your left hand. Exactly, so exactly. It, opened. it, it opens it up, exactly. And that's a note that I should put on there, exactly. Because when that's how I fell into it. I was just messing around with open-handed uh, patterns. Yeah. Awesome. Yep. Okay, so then you have some, some <coughs> foot patterns or some... Yeah, I played this in the solo. Um, now, as this is written, it's not a linear groove, but what I like to do is I take that, that uh, you see that pattern down there, it's built on 16th, uh, 16th note ostinato pattern. Mm -hmm. I just let the right hand follow that. I just kind of like started to throw this into like linear world. It's still, I mean, you know, some of the beats hit together, but I'm kind of doing a linear thing on top of that ostinato pattern yeah. with the hands. So it ends up being uh It's almost 
almost kind of starts to get a, a triplet feel to it sometimes. Yeah, like, yeah. like hopping 16th note triplets. Yeah, exactly, right? exactly. So um, that just is uh, something I just kind of stumbled upon as well. And, just and, didn't start. and then with like foot, I know everyone's going to ask, like the foot technique, which yeah. is nuts. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what, what are you doing there? Uh, uh, all I'm doing is I'm up on, my, uh, on the ball of my foot. Yeah. I always play on the ball of my foot. Um, sometimes I'll play that heel down if I'm playing a really soft ballad. Control, but basically, I'm always up, you know, uh, on the ball of the foot, and uh, just finding that point on the pedal. Uh, drum, a lot of uh, well, drumming period uh, physics is a part of it. So uh, find that tension on your pedal that feels good to you. Yeah. And just kind of get used to working it there. Now, there's an exercise that I do um, that is not written down here. Um, just very briefly, it's based on a funk thing. Yeah. Um, 16th notes in the kick drum. So, uh, high, uh, eighth notes on the hi-hat. Two and four in the What you want to do is add a, add a set of uh, 16th time. Now, what you're going for here is you want clarity, you want... Uh, consistency of volume here, yeah. and and so you want to make sure um, that you're getting, you know, a nice even sound out of the drum. So basically, that exercise just grows. You keep adding sixteenths and adding sixteenths until you can sit and hold it. You know, and cool. uh, so that's that's what I do to strengthen. Uh, you know that that right foot for the uh, bass drum, nice. and then then when you get to to, to really faster stuff like uh, it's a lot easier to do. Yeah. You know, and so I'm kind of I'm kind of sliding a, a little bit uh, on the pedal, but not a whole lot. Yeah, you very. One, the faster you go, the less it seems. You yeah, slide. exactly, yeah. exactly, exactly. Cool. So it's all physics, baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So you have. Um, that was number three. Yeah, okay. That was uh, it for the linear stuff. Okay, let's get into the, the flamser size. Yeah. <laughs> I'm interested in this. Stuff. Yeah, so the flamer sizes. So number four uh, sounds like this. It's multiple flams back to back. So you have... And what's turning it around is a flam tap. I mean, I'm sorry, a flam accent is the turnaround. So you have... Uh, and then it, it uh, progresses from there, okay? And number five uh, is this. <laughs> Dude, it took a minute to get it there, you know. Yeah. I was just, I was so uh, just enamored with flams. I love them, you know. Okay, because you, I, I noticed you use them, uh, like now you're demonstrating on the snare, but yeah. when you're drumming, you use them a lot broken up. Yeah, exactly. Drums. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, and so I love that sound, you know. <laughs> I think I think flams are definitely like underrated as far as the rudiments people choose to practice. Yeah, well, because they're 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 really hard. Yeah, you know, they're hard to really gain any kind of speed on them. Um, yeah. You know, and so uh, you have to just take your time. And um, these exercises are really kind of for the more advanced player. You yeah. know, uh, I suggest that what you do first is learn the the basic rudiments as they are. Yeah. You know, um, simple flams. In 
inverted double yeah. stroke. Uh, you know. I practice that a lot. But yeah, nothing, yeah, yeah. Like that, so and then cool. uh, the pot of fly flowers. Yeah. So. I love seeing drummers who are like, you're so good with technique. Uh, and you have such a, a technical background as far as when we were talking about where you studied. Right, exactly. We also have a solid um, foundation of groove and, and feel. Yeah, so yeah. How, does this, how do these things translate? How do you marry the two? Marry the two, yeah. Um, well, I, I guess it just begins with, uh, with studying intently on both, you know, yeah. like spending adequate time on your rudiments and also feel. This is one thing that I've, I've noticed from a lot of my students. When you practice rudiments, a lot of people don't practice rudiments in time. Yeah. You know? So when they go to do it behind the kit, it falls apart on them. You yeah. know? So like if you're playing a song, or when I'm practicing rudiments, I may have a metronome going. Really, really important to practice that stuff in time and always have a, con a, a consistent time source. Yeah. You know, that helps you make that crossover, that bridge uh, of, of putting it in the feel and, 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 you know, making it make sense. And then the feel stuff, like I told you earlier, we were talking. Yeah. For me, the feel stuff comes from listening to how guys interpret the groove and then kind of just more so listening than playing. I mean, you really, I think maybe a third of my entire practice time was devoted to just listening. Really? Yeah, just listening. Like because active listening? Like where you, you that's all you did? Yeah, like that's when all I did. exercising? Or yeah, no, no, yeah, <clears throat> just listening, just really paying close attention to how the groove feels, you know. Yeah. Um, I grew up playing straight ahead with my father, and uh, a big thing with him was shuffle, okay. you know. And, boy, he wanted it to feel a certain way. Yeah. And it, and it needed to feel a certain way, you know, and... And you just want to get that feeling in your head and in your in your in your, in your gut, basically. Yeah. You know? And once you get that feeling, really, there's nothing else that you need to do beyond that, you know. Because once the band's swinging like that, yeah. that's your job is done. Yeah. I mean, you know, and everything else is icing. So I would spend equal time listening to develop the feel. Cool. You know. Well, Rick just told me I was saying flamser sizes all yeah, the time. Yeah, flamer, <laughs> flamer sizes. Size. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> you just got corrected. <laughs> so I'll oh, make sure I say it right. Yeah, flamer sizes. Flamer sizes. Yeah, that's all right. correct. All right, now number six is uh, basically just a flam drag, you know. Um, that's one of the hardest ones to do, so I wanted to kind of spotlight it. This is really cool to set up a shuffle groove, you know. Uh, is, is that a bit of a Tony Williams lick as well? Like, is that the, the similar to the Bush stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of yeah. similar to that. Yeah. yeah. Gat does it a lot too. Yeah. You know. Nice and open, nice and relaxed, you know. Yeah. Um, but to get that up to speed, uh, it, it, it's very challenging, yeah. you know. All right, moving on to number seven is, um, uh, let's see, two, two flams back to back. Uh, with left, right coming out. Yeah. So. And then the next one, uh, number eight, is uh, uh, you want to really pl 
practice, practice these slow, really, really slow until you get them because you want to train your hands with the stickings. The stickings need to be correct yeah. because that can, that can trip you up. And you want to make sure that you're alternating. You, know, you don't want to get in a bad habit of playing the wrong stickings every time and then you learn it completely wrong. You're getting better at doing it wrong. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, exactly. As far as flams go, when, when it just comes to developing a, a single flam, I know everyone has different opinions on how open, <clears throat> open a flam, close flam. Yeah, or yeah, yeah. What is your opinion on that and when to use what? Well, I mean, my opinion is you should develop both sounds. You know, um, obviously you don't want to pop them, which is planned both at the same time. You want to... You want to practice getting a nice, really open sound. And I used to just used to do multiple flams back on uh, uh, back to back uh, with the right hand primary, left hand grace note. Yeah. And and work on actually opening it up. Almost the point we hear. Yeah. Um, I don't really have a set rule of thumb when I when I use them, you know, when I when I open them up or close them. Uh, it just kind of happens naturally for me, you know, like an emotional thing. Like if I'm playing something over here on the toms, that's naturally to me is going to be more of an open sound, yeah, you know, more bummer. of a yeah, more yeah. of an open flam, like almost a triplet, yeah. you know, almost an open triplet. Closed and compressed, they're going to become anyway, yeah. naturally. So, yeah. awesome. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, and so, as far as if someone wanted to get into this stuff, uh -huh. like, I want to do this, this is so cool, they want to play the kind of stuff you play. Right. What do you recommend for a practice routine? Like, how, how much do they do each of these each day? Like, I get obsessed with certain things, and yeah. so I would do too much, maybe? or too No, much. you can never do too much. Yeah, you can never too, do <laughs> too much. I think people balance. err on the side of doing. Uh, not enough. Yeah. You know, maybe. Um, a good a good rule of thumb to me is I, I generally spend maybe 30, 30 minutes okay. on a concept or like, say, for instance, I would take this. If this is brand new to me, I would take number four and I would just concentrate on number four for 30 minutes. Okay. You know? So one thing for one thing. Oh. Yeah. For about 30 minutes. Uh, and I always tell my students, consistency is the best is the best. You know, uh, it makes no sense to practice for six hours one day. And then don't touch the drums for like six weeks. Right. You know, even if you cut that back to 15 minutes a day, every day, 15 minutes, you're going to see some progress in your plan. Yeah. You know, uh, consistency is the key. Drumming is muscle memory. So you're training the muscles. And the more you can do it, the quicker you'll get to your goal. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Now you actually have private lessons in Georgia. As yes, well, right? I do. I okay. do. Yep. You guys can check. I, I want to forgot to mention it before, and so you can check that out on his website. Yes. Uh, yes. Because um, I think it'd be great to. Oh yeah. Do you do uh, like Skype? -based Skype. Lessons? Yeah. You mm -hmm. do. Yep. Okay. Sure do. So you guys, yeah. yeah you, I think you can just buy a lesson straight. There. Yeah. Straight there. Right. Okay. Exactly. Cool. Go to the website. Uh, um, okay. So uh, now's the time. We're, we'll eventually take some questions, but I think you had a uh, solo or that you wanted to do. Um. I'm good on the solo, unless you want, you want me to play again. Oh, we no, have yeah. time? We have time? I think we have like five minutes while I, I kind of organize the questions okay. and get them All right, together. Okay, cool, cool. Five or ten minutes or 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll play a little bit more, I guess. Yeah. And remember, guys, we're giving away the uh, DVD and a CD at the end of the, the lesson, so stick around for that.
is fun, man. I love this, man. <laughs> <laughs> just get to just shred. That's yeah. awesome. Uh, cool. I have a, a two things I'd like okay. to talk about before we get into the questions. The first is, uh, and this is just, I think, a cool story. I was talking to you about uh, Bruce Hornsby on the drive-in. Oh, yeah. That story you told me about when you got asked to play for him. Do you okay. mind sharing that? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So uh, J.V. Collier, the bass player, yeah. called me up and said, hey, man, you know, and I'm sitting in the studio, I'm working on a track, phone rings, and, I, and so he calls me up, he says, hey, um, Bruce is uh, looking for a drummer, man, would you be interested in doing the gig? I was like, yeah, 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 of course, are you kidding me? Send yeah. me the music. So <laughs> I'm sitting there, and uh, so he emails me the, the music, it's probably maybe like two or three albums worth mm -hmm. of material, you know, and I go, oh, cool, yeah, this is going to be great, man, you know. Mm -hmm. A couple of days later, I get another email with about three or more albums worth of material. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> then, a few days after that, I get even more material. So, as it turns out, Bruce's song list comprises of about, two, you know, about 200 songs. Wow. And he pulls from his entire library. We, he tries to play every song that he's ever written. And... Uh, and then also, uh, he spent a lot of time, you know, playing with the Grateful Dead. Yeah. So uh, we do some of the Grateful Dead songs, and then there's some standards that he wants to do. And then here's the kicker: Bruce doesn't use a set list at all. So if you're on the gig, even from the first day, like yeah. when I first met Bruce, he came up to me and said, "Hey, man, it's gonna be all right. Don't worry about it." <laughs> <laughs> so he just sits down at the piano and starts to play. You know, it's almost kind of like Stevie's thing. You know, he just sits down and starts to play. And wherever he is, you have to know the song. And generally, he weaves from one song to the next. So we never know where we're going. It's always turning on a dime. So on one hand, I loved it. I mean, when I was setting for that thing, you know, it was crazy. Yeah. You know, I had to really go in deep, you know. But it, what it did for me is it gave me, it taught me how to study and how to internalize the music because you had to remember stuff you know yeah and I had to go really deep with Bruce's music because it's not standard forms yeah. you know one song may have a bridge that's like nine bars long you know it's little stuff like that a verse the second verse of a song may be like only like you know seven and a half bars that's and then, so confusing yeah, yeah. it is man yeah. so you know it, it just you know it was it was quite a challenge you know and I but I love him for it and every night on the gig, it's just wide open, and we just never know where it's going to go. I've been on the gig now for, what, 11 years? Yeah. And I'm totally at home with him and the concept now, so I just sit down and go, okay, let's go have fun. Yeah, you know? yeah that's cool, man. Yeah, I wanted to share. I think that's, <laughs> that's uh, so cool. Uh, here's a good question <clears throat> that, that goes good with my question. Uh, he said, we had a chance to meet you briefly outside the venue uh, when you played with Bruce at Celebrate Virginia about a year back. Mm, okay. And uh, we didn't get to say hi after the show because the security guards gave us a hard time. <laughs> Thanks for noticing us uh, um, rocking out up front. <clears throat> Sorry. Mm -hmm. My question is to you, could you break down the linear 30-second note fill you often perform live on songs like Candy Mountain Run? And this question oh, is Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jeff yeah, that's Furman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that... <laughs> I, that feel, I think I know what you're talking about. That feel is comprised of just groupings of fives and sevens. And um, so, uh, very simply. Three up. Two in the foot. Five. And also sevens. So I just, I kind of just play around with it, you know. Um, Candy Mountain, the groove. For those who don't know, the groove is kind of, uh, kind of this rock thing. That's basically what I'm doing. So nice. That's the breakdown of it. <laughs> and if, if you're looking, uh, if you're an Edge member, if you're looking for some lessons on those uh, odd time groupings, like the playing with fives and sevens, we have a few more lessons on that in yeah. the library. So, 
Uh, this one is from Chris Warunke. He says, where did you get the idea to use three cowbells or four on your kit, and do you usually do this? He says it sounds great. Oh, thanks. Um, yeah, I just kind of came up with it, man. I started with one, uh, got into the, uh, the two, three Roomba Clave uh, with one cowbell, and then uh, one day, I, I, I don't know if you've ever seen me live before, but usually I play eight, 10, 12, and, and, but sometimes with Bruce, this is my setup. I drop the, the eight. And I dropped the eight because one day I was just experimenting and added another cowbell in, in place in that same position. Um, once I got that going, then I said, oh, what the heck, just throw another <laughs> one over here, you know, because I, I keep wanting to hear more colors yeah. each time. And, and as I did it, it really kind of just like opened up and flourished for me. Um, you know, a lot of things just kind of come by just experimenting, man. You know, when I'm at home, I, you know, I'm at a point in my career where I'm just looking for different things and you know, being, being with Bruce and the Noisemakers and having been uh, in Earth, Wind & Fire for 13 years uh, with great thinkers like Maurice White, Bruce Hornsby, Bette Mittler. I mean, all those people think, you know, completely out of the box a lot yeah. of times, you know what I mean? And that's what makes them great. So I try to just adopt, you know, that thinking process. Um, it just gives me a lot of different colors. Uh, this is a cool username. His name username is Cross Sticker. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Go Cross Sticker. <laughs> he says, "I'm an instructor with many age groups. Uh, what can I do to motivate my students to practice more?" <clears throat> um, you can take them to clinics to see guys. Uh, that would be a, a, a nice group outing. I do that with my students sometimes. If I know somebody's coming into town, yeah. I'll just call them up and go, hey, look, I'm going to see Dennis or I'm going to see Cobham. I want you to come meet me, you know. Yeah. Um, I know when I was growing up, that was a huge inspiration for me to go out and just see guys play. Yeah, you I know? agree. It's one thing to, to hear and listen, but to actually see a guy do it in, in a real setting makes a big difference. Yeah. So um, um, that's one way to keep them motivated and um, continue to stimulate them with, with uh, you know, new material. Yeah. I think, you know, um, sometimes, uh, obviously, everybody progresses at, progresses at a different rate. So my philosophy on that is when I teach, I just let kids kind of like progress at the rate which is natural for them. The only time I come down on them really hard is when I know they haven't spent any time on the lesson. Yeah. You know, but if a kid is put in the time, but they're still not just kind of, you know, getting to that next uh, level, just got to be patient with them. Show them a lot of love. Yeah. You know. Cool. Yeah. Uh, this is from Frankie Mack. He says, Sonny, what has been or still is the fundamental number one thing you focus on in practice? Um, I think the very first thing that I focus on in practice is I want to make sure that my time is always solid, you know? Yeah. And so uh, I'll sit at home, uh, start up a sequence, or just like I played with earlier, and I'll do just simple grooves, uh, very simple grooves. Subdividing in my mind, okay? Because if you if you get in such a habit of playing every, if you get in such a habit of just having to play sixteenth notes in order to stay in time. Then the minute a producer says, "Hey, man, I just want you to play quarter notes," yeah. then you're gonna you're gonna freak out, yeah. you know. So you gotta just you gotta get to the basic, uh, very simple primary. be able to do that, you know. Uh, I had a lot of time to practice on that and work on that when I was playing with Cameo. Yeah. And um, because the grooves are very simple, very open grooves. So, you know, that's the best way to do it. The first thing I, I, I focus on is the is time and feel. Cool. This one's from Dude 116 uh, Thank you so much for being willing to come in. 
You have inspired me with this lesson to get back to working on my fingers. Uh, also, are those K custom session hats? Yes, they are. <coughs> they are. And he said, hopefully you can do another lesson here soon. Uh, I hope so. If you can invite it back, I'd <laughs> <Yeah>. love to. <laughs> Man, I'm, I need some water. I think I'm... You need some water? <coughs> I was here. sick like a week ago. Oh, you want to so. hit this? <laughs> you, can, you can have it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. Maybe you should just play for like 10 seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go. <laughs> I got that thing in the back yeah. of my throat. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Blue Stew, he says, Sunny, absolutely incredible and faster than Tony Royster Jr. <laughs> no. That's, that's yeah. what it's all about. Who's faster? Yeah, right. right. <laughs> exactly. Wrong. <laughs> yeah. Um, he says, can you go through your introduction learning process of your clave cowbell? Double, triple, you explained at your clinic at Atlanta Institute of Music. Simply awesome, a true inspiration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, <laughs> Obviously, the clave can be felt duple and triple meter. Um, the process, uh, very quickly, I gotta, I mean, because it's a long process. The very first thing to, to do is to just start playing the clave in the left foot. Get used to playing that rhythm on the left hand, uh, in the left foot. The next step after that <coughs> is get used to, um, and then you can play quarter notes. notes in the right hand uh, so that you can get used to uh, going in and out of that duple and triple meter. Okay, that on both hands. And then uh, the next step for me was to just move it over to the cowbell, 16th notes in the, in the cowbell. And... Uh, Step after that is the, the kick pattern, tumbao. And then moving on, I at, at that point I start thinking about the kick and snare being and toms being more or less ad lib instruments as opposed to parts uh, that are being played. Um, that really is the only con consistency, um, the, the clave. Um, so just so you know, it took me, I just did this by itself for about three weeks. Yeah. You know, it's going to take a minute to get all this to come together. So don't rush yourself. Just make sure you do it enough so that it becomes comfortable and second nature to you. starts to open up. You want to gain freedom inside of it. You don't want to become patternistic with it. You know, yeah. you just want to. It's very cool. What made you do the Roomba club instead of this I song? just, I, I walked into a club in Puerto Rico one night and there was three guys, percussionists playing and, yeah. uh, and there was a girl dancing and the groove, it just went all over my, over my body. I was like, yeah. wow, I love that. So I decided to just go ahead and, and dive into that one. You cool. know, yeah. Uh, but, is, but but that that well is really deep. It's a lot. Oh, there's yeah. a lot of information there. You know, when you get into world styles and, and the world rhythms, it's, yeah, yeah, it's, it's never it's, ending. It's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. I love that stuff. Uh, this one's from uh, Scotty Aldrich. He says, "Awesome, Sunny. Thank you for coming to Drumio." Uh, he says, "Your stick grip. What uh, would you say? It's French or kind of whatever?" Is oh no, I use French. Uh, yeah, it's definitely a French. Um, 
I learned all of my rudiments traditionally first, and then um, since um, I was heavily inspired to do the French timpani grip by Billy Cobham and seeing him, and uh, decided to develop that. Uh, and the, it really worked out great for me playing, playing the kit, because uh, a lot of the open stuff is really cool. Yeah. Um, being able to execute the rudiments uh, accurately is, uh, to me, it, it, it it, it works better for me, French timpani. Although I did, you know, I studied music in school and did the whole German thing, uh, but that's primarily for concert. You know, legit snare drum. Yeah. You know, and not to say you can't play set that way, but it's just more comfortable for me to do French timpani. Cool. Uh, well, I thought I was getting to the end of the questions, and then a bunch <laughs> more just came in. So <laughs> we can be here all day. Uh, Casey says, "I love you, Sunny," and that is all. Thank so. you, Casey. <laughs> Okay, this is a good one. This is probably the last one that we can take. I'm so sorry. Um, this is a, a free lesson. We obviously brought, brought him out to kind of like, uh, everyone can watch this no matter what. And so we do this every day in Drumio. Normally we answer every question, yeah, but yeah, we yeah. can't do it on days <laughs> like this. So I'm so sorry. Um, this is, is Gig Giggles, I guess is your username? <laughs> G-I-G-E-L-S? I guess. Uh, Gigles? Giggles. Giggles, that's what Giggles. Yeah. Um, are, are spring grips, I guess he's talking about French grip, a useful set of items? Oh, no, this is like spring thing. A useful set of items for building up strength in the fingers, like those. Oh, yeah, yeah, Did yeah. you do that? No, I didn't do that. I didn't do that. I have an exercise that I use to do that. Um, just very briefly, let's call this finger two, three, and four. The rhythm for the exercise is one and two and three and four. E and yeah. This is a finger isolation exercise. One and two and three and four. E and a one, two, three. Four e and a one, two, three, four and a. Obviously on both hands. You'll okay? do that just like you're doing it or on the drum? Yeah, I do it on the drum. So. And the goal here is to control the stick, you know? Control the stick. You want that stick to come straight up off the drum. So you go through that routine, but you add a set of 16th notes every time. So you eventually have all 16ths. Here's the key. When this finger's working, you want to make sure uh, all the other fingers are out of the way. It's like individualizing each finger. See that? See how I move that out? Yeah. Yep. Cool. So that's basically what I use to kind of develop stamina and strength. Not so much. I haven't used I've seen those, yeah. but I uh, didn't use them to, to develop strength, you know. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, so we're going to give away uh, some stuff here. And I just want to mention, again, if you guys want to hear more about uh, Sonny Emery, check out his website, sonny-emery.com. You can put that on this. Oh, yes, yeah, there it is. Sonny-emery.com. I also want to thank uh, Yamaha. They call, uh, Sean called me one day and was like, how would you like to have Sonny Emery? And I'm like, I would like to. <laughs> and so we're just like stoked that you're here. Well, man. thanks so, so much. You guys yeah. are really doing a great thing here, man. Uh, Thank you. You know, you folks, you know, please take advantage of this because this is a great, great setup. Yeah. Jarrett, you're doing a great job, man. Thank you. Uh, to all the guys on your staff, man. Yeah, they're Great awesome. job. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it was, you know, such a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much, Good. man. Anytime. Anytime. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, so we're going to do, um, I'm going to give this stuff away and you got another track. Yeah, yes? yeah. Okay, so. Basically, um, I have one question here. I need one more question. If you yeah. can quickly think of it. Yeah, yeah. But I, I, the first question is, and this is what you just got to post this oh, okay. in the chat. Um, and the first one that, that answers it, you can get, which one do you want to give away first? Uh, let's give away the CD first. Okay, the CD, the Hypno Funk CD. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, what university did Sonny get his degree in music at? There's like a couple second delay yeah, in, yeah. The, in the videos. And then the other one is uh, how many years was I worth Earth, Wind & Fire? Okay, nice. You're probably going to be looking for that. <laughs> help me, guys. Help me, guys. The chat's going nuts. Okay, Jeff Furman. You got it. 
Bro, and he, he asked a question too. Oh, yeah? So that's great. Oh, cool. Jeff, you got it. And so email, uh, email me, jared at drumeo.com, and I will grab your address and uh, ship it out to you, no problem. Um, okay, so this one is next question for the DVD. <laughs> People heard you say the question. Okay. So they're <laughs> posting it. Okay, I'll just choose the first one. Okay, so okay, no, no, change it up. Bette change Midler. It up. How long have I been with Bette Midler? Okay, how long has he, as Sonny, played for Bette Midler? That's going to be a hard one. I don't even know the answer to this. <laughs> don't, don't, don't say uh, well, maybe you should tell me. Uh, yeah, I'll tell you. Okay, turn off the mic, Victor. <laughs> 90. Someone said 90. <laughs> I didn't say how old is Matt Miller. <laughs> I said. <laughs> you can hear me laugh. Yeah, exactly. No one's, gonna get, no one's got it yet. Come on. Come on. Oh, here we go. Uh, Taj for Groove. Si yeah, he said 16 years. That's correct. So Taj for Groove, email jared at drumeo.com, and I will uh, mail you out a copy of his DVD. Like I said, you guys, check out his website, sunny emerycom uh, You can purchase a Skype lesson there, um, and you can also buy the DVD and definitely support him. Hopefully, he gets tons of support, and he's like, I want to go back there again, so oh, I get yeah. more support. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, you're going to play us out with a, a track? Yeah, this is called uh, G-Funk. Okay, but th hey man, I'm, hey, I'm going to head out and watch from over the right, side, man. so Thanks. I don't want a panic attack again on you. <laughs> no problem, man. <laughs>